welcome to Bible reading with study guide. We've been reading in Judges the story of Samson. He was a Nazarite. He didn't cut his hair. I don't know all the rules to it, but there were rules to that kind of a person. Anyway, let's continue on and see how Samson's life turns out. Okay, we went through 15 last time, starting 15. After a while, in the time of the wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat. And he said, let me go into my wife, into her room. But her father would not permit him to go. Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her, therefore I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please take her hand. Please, please take her instead. And Samson said to them, This time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. Then Samson went and caught 300 fox, foxes, and he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between each pair of their tails. Well, that would be a feat in itself. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and the olive groves. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Samson said to them, Since you would do a thing like this, I will surely take revenge on you, and after that I will cease. So he attacked them, hip and thigh, with a great slaughter. Then he went down and dwelt in the cleft of the rock of Etam. Now the Philistines went up and encamped in Judah and deployed themselves against Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why have you come up to get against us? So they answered, We have come up to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this that you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. But they t said to him, We have come down to arrest you, that we may deliver you into the hands of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hand. But you will, we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with new ropes and brought him up from the rock. Then he came to Lehi. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came, shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. And so it was, when he had finished speaking, that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called the place Ramoth Lehi. Then he became very thirsty, so he cried out to the Lord and said, You have given me this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. Now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? So God split the hollow place that is in Lehi. And water came out, and he drank, and his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore he called its name An Hapkor, which is in Lehi to this day. And he judged the people of Israel twenty years in the days of the Philistines. Okay, no questions so far. Judges 16. Now Samson went to Gaza, and saw a harlot there, and went into her. 
When the Gazites were told, Samson has come here, they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it's daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gate posts, pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. <laughs> wow. Afterward it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to him, her, Entice him, find out where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and every one of us will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. The men were lying in wait, staying with her in the room. And she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yard yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me what you may be bound with. So he said to her, If they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I should become weak and be like any other man. Therefore Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And men were lying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arms like a thread. Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tightly with the batten of the loom and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he woke from his sleep and pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, have not told me where your strength lies. It came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I will become weak, like any other man. When Delilah saw that he told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. When she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head, that she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he woke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times, and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Such words. Then the Philistines took him, and pulled out his eyes, put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, they bound him with bronze fetters, and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. And they said, Our god has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. <coughs> Excuse me. When the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, our God has delivered into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our debt. <clears throat> so it happened, when the hearts were married, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison, and he performed for them, and they stationed him between the pillars. Then Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, 
Let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines from my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and one on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the Lord's and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. And his brother, brothers and all his father's household came and took him, and brought him up, and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael, and the tomb of his father Manoah, in the tomb of his father Manoah. He had judged Israel. 20 years. Wow. Sad thing when the Spirit of God leaves a person. Oh, that must have hurt. That was chapter 16. What was a symbol of Samson's strength? 16, 17. It was his hair, right? How many times did he trick Delilah? You have to go through the story and count them. So he mocked her three times and finally she told him. Judges 17. Now there was a man from the mountains of Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you and on which you put a curse, even saying in my ear, in my ears, here was a silver with me. And I took it. And his mother said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my son. So when he had returned the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother. His mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver from my hand to the Lord for my son to make a carved image and a molded image. Now, therefore, I will return it to you. Thus he returned the silver to his mother. Then his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith, and he made it into a carved image and a molded image, and they were in the house of Micah. The man Micah had a shrine made an ephod and household idols, and he consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. And in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now there was a young man from Bethlehem in Judah, of the family of Judah. He was a Levite, and he was staying there. And the man departed from the city of Bethlehem in Judah to stay wherever he could find a place. Then he came to the mountains of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said to him, Where do you come from? So he said to him, I am a Levite from Bethlehem and Judah, and I am on my way to find a place to stay. Micah said to him, Dwell with me, and be a father and a priest to me, and I will give you ten shekels of silver per year, a suit of clothes, and your sustenance. So the Levite went in. Then the Levite was consent to dwell with the man, and the young man became like one of his sons to him. So Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and lived in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will be good to me, since I have a Levite as a priest. And I wonder what was happening to all of the priests during this time of disobedience and rebellion and unbelief. Who stole his mother's silver? And then when he returned it, what did she do with some of it? At the beginning of the 
chapter, right? It was Micah. He said, I took it. And when he returned it to her, she had a silversmith make some idols for her. Now we have a Levite living with Micah. Judges 18. In those, day, those days there was no king in Israel. And in those days the tribe of the Dan Danites was seeking an inheritance for itself to dwell in. For until that day their inheritance among the tribes of Israel had not fallen to them. That's a lot of years have passed. So the children of Dan sent five men of their family from their territory, men of valor from Zorah and Eshtal, to spy out the land and search it. And they said to them, Go search the land. So they went to the mountains of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, and lodged there. While they were at the house of Micah, they recognized the voice of the young Levite. They turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What do you have here? He said to them, Thus and so, Micah did for me. He has hired me, and I have become his priest. So they said to him, Please inquire of God, that we may know whether the journey on which we go will be prosperous. And the king said to them, Go in peace. The presence of the Lord be with you on your way. So the five men departed and went to Laish. They saw the people who were there, how they dwelt safely in the manner of the Sidonians, quiet and secure. There were no rulers in the land who might put them to shame for anything. They were far from the Sidonians, and they had no ties with anyone. Then the spies came back to their brethren Zorah and Eshtal, and their brethren said to them, What is your report? And they said, Arise, let us go up against them, for we have seen the land, and indeed it is very good. Would you do nothing? Do not hesitate to go and possess the, the land. When you go, you will come to a secure people in a large land, for God has given it into your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is on the earth. And six hundred men of the family of the Danites went up from there, from Zorah and Eshtal, armed with weapons of war. Then they went up and encamped in Kerjath Jerem in Judah. Therefore they called that place Mahadan to this day. There it is, west of Kerjath Jerem. And they passed from there to the mountains of Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. Then the five men who had gone to spy out the country of Laish answered and said to their brethren, Do you know that there are in these houses an ephod, household idols, a carved image and a molded image? Now therefore consider what you should do. So they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite man, to the house of Micah, and greeted him. The six hundred men armed with their weapons of war, who were the children of Dan, stood by the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had gone to spy out the land went in, went up. Entering there, they took the carved image, the ephod, the household items, and the molded image. The priest stood at the entrance of the gate with the six hundred men who were armed with weapons of war. When these went into Micah's house and took the carved image, the ephod, and the household idols, and the molded image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? And they said to him, Be quiet. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us. Be a father and a priest to us. Is it better for you to be a priest to the household of one man, or that you be a priest to a tribe and a family in Israel? So the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the household idols and the carved image and took his place among the people. Then they turned and departed, put the little ones, the livestock, and the goods in front of them. When they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they called out to the children of Dan, so they turned around and said to Micah, What ails you that you have gathered such a company? So he said, You have taken away my gods, which I made, and the priests, and you have done away, you have gone away. Now what more do I have? How can you say to me, What ails you? And the children of Dan said to him, Do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry men fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your household. 
Then the children of Dan went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his house. So they took the things Micah had made and the priest who had belonged to him and went to Laish to a people quiet and secure. And they struck them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. There was no deliverance because it was far from Sidon. And they had no ties with anyone. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob. So they rebuilt the city and dwelt there. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name Dan of their father, who was born to Israel. However, the name of the city formerly was Laish. Then the children of Dan set up for themselves a carved image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up for themselves Micah's carved image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Hmm. They've forgotten their God, haven't they? I bet you those, there's some in there that haven't. A minority, a remnant. <clears throat> but they're a minority. Judges 19. And it came to pass in those days, when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite staying in the remote mountains of Ephraim. He took for himself a concubine from Bethlehem and Judah. But his concubine played the harlot against him, and went away from him to her father's house at Bethlehem and Judah, and was there four whole months. Then her husband arose and went after her to speak kindly to her, and bring her back, having his servant and a couple donkeys with him. So she brought him into her father's house, and when her father of the young woman saw him, he was glad to meet him. Now his father-in-law, the young woman's father, detained him, and he stayed with him three days. So they ate and drank and lodged there. Then it came to pass on the fourth day that they arose early in the morning, and he departed. But the young woman's father said to the son-in-law, Refresh your heart with a morsel of bread, and afterwards go your way. So they sat down, and the two of them ate and drank together. Then the young woman's father said to the man, Please be content to stay all night, and let your heart be merry. And when the man stood to depart, his father-in-law urged him. So he lodged there again. Then he rose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. But the young woman's father said, Please refresh your heart. So they delayed until afternoon, and both of them ate. And when the man stood to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the young woman's father, said to him, Look, the day is now drawing toward evening. Please spend the night. See, the day is coming to an end. Lodge here that your heart may be merry. Tomorrow, go your way early so that you may get home. However, the man was not willing to spend the night. So he rose and departed and came opposite Jabus, that is, Jerusalem, with him, were two saddled donkeys. His concubine was also with him. They were near, I guess, Jeb, Jeba, Jebus, Jebus, and the day was far spent. And the servant said to his master, Come, please, let us turn aside into the city of the Jebusites. Jebusites, says Jebus, Jebusites, and lodge in it. But his master said to him, We will not turn aside here into the city of the foreigners, who are not children of Israel. We will go on to Gibeah. So he said to his servant, Come, let us draw near to one of these places and spend the night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed by and went their way. And the sun went down on them near Gibeah, which belongs to Benjamin. And they turned aside there to go into lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat down in the open square of the city, for no one would take them into his house to spend the night. Just then an old man came in from his work in the field that evening, who also was from the mountains of Ephraim. He was staying in Gibeah, whereas the men of the place were Benjaminites. Benjamites. Benjamites. And when he raised his eyes, he saw the traveler in the open square of the city. And the old man said, where are you going? Where do you come from? And he said to him, We are passing from Bethlehem and Judah toward the remote mountains of Ephraim. I am from there. 
I went to Bethlehem and Judah. Now I am going to the house of the Lord. But there is no one who will take me into his house. Although we have both straw and fodder for our donkeys and bread and wine for myself, for your female servant or for the young man who is with your servant, there is no lack of anything. The old man said, Peace be with you. However, let all your needs be my responsibility. Only do not spend the night in the open square. So he brought him into his house and gave fodder to the donkeys, and they washed their feet and ate and drank. And they were enjoying themselves suddenly. As they were enjoying themselves suddenly, certain men of the city, perverted men, surrounded the house and beat on the door. They spoke to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring out the man who came to your house, that we may know him carnally. But the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said, No, my brethren, I beg you, do not act so wickedly. Seeing this man has come into my house, do not commit this outrage. Look, here is my virgin daughter and the man's concubine. Let me bring them out. Now humble them and do with them as you please. But to this man do not do such a vile thing. But the men would not heed him. So the man took his concubine and brought her out to them. And they knew her and abused her all night until morning. And when the day began to break, they let her go. Then the woman came as the day was dawning and fell down at the door of the man's house where her master was till it was light. When the master rose in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way, there was his concubine fallen at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. And he said to her, Get up and let's be going. But there was no answer. So the man lifted her onto the donkey, and the man got up and went to his place. When he entered his house, he took a knife and laid hold of his concubine and divided her into twelve pieces, limb by limb, and sent her throughout all the territory of Israel. So it was that all who saw it said, No such deed has been done or seen from the day that the children of Israel came up from the land of Egypt until this day. Consider it, confer, and speak up. Judges 20. So all the children of Israel came out from Dan to Beersheba, as well as from the land of Gilead, and the congregation gathered together as one man before the Lord at Mizpah. And the leaders of all the people, all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of the Lord, 400,000 foot soldiers who drew the sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel had gone up to Mizpah. Then the children of Israel said, Tell us, how did this wicked deed happen? So the Levite, the husband of the woman who was murdered, answered and said, My concubine and I went up into Gil Gibeah which belongs to Benjamin, to spend the night. And the men of Gibeah rose up against me and surrounded the house at night because of me. They intended to kill me, but instead they ravished my concubine so that she died. So I took hold of my concubine, cut her in pieces, sent her throughout all the territory of the inheritance of Israel, because they committed lewdness and outrage in Israel. Look, all of you are children of Israel. Give your advice and counsel here and now. So all the people rose as one man, saying, None of us will go to his tent, nor will any turn back to his house. But now this is a thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up against it by lot. We will take ten men out of every hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, a hundred out of every thousand, and a thousand out of every ten thousand, to make provisions for the people, that when they come to Gibeah and Benjamin, they may repay all the vileness that they have done in Israel. So all the men of Israel gathered against the city, united together as one man. Then the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What is this wickedness that has occurred among you? Now therefore deliver up the men, who perver the perverted men who were in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and remove the evil from Israel. But the children of Israel, would, the children of Benjamin, would not listen to the voice of their brethren children of Israel. Instead, the children of Benjamin gathered together from their cities to Gibeah to go to battle against the children of Israel. 
and from their cities at that time the children of Benjamin numbered 26,000 men who drew the sword, besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, who numbered 700 select men. Among all this people were 700 select men who were left-handed. Everyone could sling a stone at a hair's breadth and not miss. Now besides Benjamin, the men of Israel numbered 400,000 men and drew the sword. All of these were men of war. Then the children of Israel arose and went to the house of God to inquire of God. They said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah first. So the children of Israel rose in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in battle array to fight against them at Gibeah. Then the children of Benjamin came out of Gibeon on that day, cut down to the ground 22,000 men of the Israelites. And the people, that is the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and again formed the battle line at the place where they had put themselves in array on the first day. Then the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until evening and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I draw, again draw near for battle against the children of my brother Benjamin? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Just a minute. So the children of Israel approached the children of Benjamin on the second day. And Benjamin went out against them from Gibeah on the second day and cut down to the ground 18,000 more of the children of Israel. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel, that is, all the people, went up and came to the house of God and wept. And they sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of oh God was in. I'm going to go back here. So the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go to battle against the children of my brother Benjamin, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hand. Then Israel set men in ambush all around Gibeah. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day, and put themselves in battle array against Gibeah as at other times. So the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to strike down and kill some of the people, as at other times, in the highways, one of which goes up to Bethel and the other to Gibeah. And in the field, about thirty men of Israel. And the children of Benjamin said, They are defeated before us as at first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw him, draw them away from the city to the highways. So all the men of Israel rose from their place and put themselves in battle array at Baal Tamar. Then Israel's men in ambush pushed forth from their position in the plain of Gibeah. And ten thousand select men from all Israel came against Gibeah. And the battle was fierce, but the Benjamites did not know that disaster was upon them. The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed that day 25,100 Benjamites. All those drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were defeated. The men of Israel had given ground to the Benjamites because they relied on the men in ambush they had set against Gibeah, and the men in ambush quickly rushed upon Gibeah. The men in ambush spread out and struck the whole city with the edge of the sword. Now the appointed signal between the men of Israel and the men of ambush was that they would make a great cloud of smoke rise up from the city, whereupon the men of Israel would turn in battle. Now Benjamin had begun to strike and kill about thirty of the men of Israel, for they had said, Surely they are defeated before us as in the first battle. But when the cloud began to rise from the city in column of smoke, 
The Benjamites looked behind them, and there was the whole city going up in smoke to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned back, the men of Benjamites packed the men, men of Benjamin panicked, for they saw that the disaster had come upon them. Therefore they turned them back before the men of Israel in the direction of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them, and whoever came out of the cities, they destroyed in their midst. They surrounded the Benjamites, chased them, and easily trampled them down as far as the front of Gibeah toward the east. And 18,000 men of Benjamin fell. All of these were men of valor. Then they turned and fled toward the wilderness to the rock of Ramon. And they cut down 5,000 of them on the highways. Then they pursued them relentlessly up to Gedim and killed 2,000 of them. So all who fell of Benjamin that day were 25,000 men who drew the sword. All these are men of valor. But 600 men turned and fled toward the wilderness to the rock of Rimmon, and they stayed there at the rock of Rimmon for four months. And the men of Israel turned back against the children of Benjamin and struck them down with the edge of the sword from every city, men and beasts, all who were found. They also set fire to the cities they came to. Looks like there's one question. Goodness sakes. Why was there a battle between the 11 tribes of Israel <clears throat> and their brother Benjamin? What had happened? Remember? Because what had been done And because they wouldn't turn over the evil men. Judges 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn an oath at Mizpah, saying, None of us shall give his daughter to Benjamin as a wife. Then the people came to the house of God and remained there before God till evening. They lifted up their voices and wept bitterly and said, O Lord of God of Israel, why has this come to pass in Israel that today there should be missing, there should be one tribe missing in Israel? So it was on the next morning that the people rose early and built an altar there and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. The children of Israel said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel who did not come up with the assembly to the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning anyone who did not come up to the Lord at Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. But the children of Israel grieved for Benjamin their brother and said, Our tribe is cut off from Israel today. One tribe is cut off from Israel today. What shall we do for wives for those who remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them our daughters as wives? And they said, but one is there from among the tribes of Israel who did not come up to Mizpah to the Lord. And in fact, no one had come to the camp from Jabesh Gilead to the assembly. For when the people were counted, indeed, not one of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead was there. So the congregation sent out there 12,000 of their most valiant men and commanded and saying, Go and strike the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, including the women and children. And this is the thing you shall do. You shall utterly destroy every male and every woman who has known a man intimately. So they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins who had not known a man intimately, <clears throat> and they brought them to the camp of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. Then the whole congregation sent word to the children of Benjamin who were at the rock of Ramon and announced peace to them. So Benjamin came back at that time, and they gave them the women whom they had saved alive of the women of Jabesh Gilead, and yet they had not found enough for them. And the people grieved for Benjamin, because the Lord had made a void in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, What shall we do for wives for those who remain, since the women of Benjamin have been destroyed? 
And they said, There must be an inheritance for the survivors of Benjamin, that a tribe may not be destroyed from Israel. However, we cannot give them wives from our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn an oath, saying, Cursed be one who gives a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, In fact, there is a yearly feast of the Lord in Shiloh, which is no north of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem and south to Lebanon. Therefore they instructed the children of Benjamin, saying, Go, lie and wait in the vineyards, and watch. And just when the daughters of Shiloh come out to perform their dances, then come out from the vineyards, and every man catch a wife for himself with the daughters of Shiloh, and then go to the land of Benjamin. Then it shall be when their fathers or their brothers come to us to complain that we shall say to them, Be kind to them for our sakes, because we did not take a wife for any of them in the war. For it is not as though you have given the women to them at this time, making yourselves guilty of your oath. And the children of Benjamin did so, and they took enough wives for their number from those who danced, whom they caught. Then they went and returned to their inheritance, and they rebuilt the cities and dwelt in them. So the children of Israel departed from there at that time, every man to his tribe and family. They went out from there, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Okay, one more question, and that's the end of the book of Judges. How did the Israelites live during this time period? And it's repeated back in 17.6. They did what was right in their own eyes, didn't they? There was no one to lead them. All right, next time we're going to start with Ruth and get into 1 Samuel. Hope you're enjoying this. I am. I'm learning so much more, even though I've read it before. <laughs>